Thank you, Bryson. Three shout outs this evening. Now, Bryson, when were you down at Winterfest down in Arlington? Uh, last, week. last weekend. I, we, we are so blessed. You know, we see Bryson, we go, oh, you know, it's Bryson. When the guys who run Winterfest, and again, you say, oh, no, what is that? That is a youth rally, if you can call it that. How many kids were there? 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 kids in the Arlington Convention Center. This is, a, this is the guy they called the lead worship there. Y'all give Bryson a hand. I appreciate that. Now, I got to listen uh, to a recording of that singing. Now, granted, it was 5,000, and they do some newer songs. So I'm going to be telling Bryson tomorrow those songs here quick. I love them, and I know you're going to love them too. Uh, one other shout out to the mom and dad who had, well, they had a tie for the best afternoon possible, but I only see two of them here, Clint and Amy Emerson. I do not see Paul and Tara Marcu. Henry, go ahead and stand up. Henry was baptized this afternoon. Way to go, Henry. Awesome. And so Clint was able to baptize Henry and Paul was able to baptize Alex and Emma. What a great day. Uh, I know they are just on, on cloud nine. And then also just a shout out update. Thank you, church. Shout out to you uh, for encouraging Shannon and I. You continue to ask how she is doing and she is doing great. She is doing so great from her uh, kidney donation surgery. She's in San Diego right now. And, uh, you know, so she is... Uh, they have her annual national conference for her company. And so she's out at San Diego running that, and that is going well. I need you to pray for me. I thought she was coming home Wednesday. And so Tuesday, I invited the entire Young Professionals uh, group over to my house for dinner. I found out today she's coming home Tuesday night right in the middle of that. And so pray for me. And no, she, she will jump right in the middle of that, and we'll have a great time. But uh, great, great stuff going on. Wasn't today an unbelievable day? It was all the way around. Uh, I've got a great vantage point. You should be jealous of me. Uh, I get to see at the different branches what is going on. And there was a spirit today across the board that was just outstanding at every level. Uh, the Connect service officially began today uh, at Brookside. Tom, how many did they have today? 150. 150. And I'll say this. The, the encouraging thing about uh, that Connect, the you know, second gathering there at Brookside, is I looked out, I didn't know half of them. And, and I mean, some of that's, well, Mitch, you need to get to know some more folks, but there's a whole lot of, I didn't know half of them because a good portion of that half had never been there before. And so anyway, great stuff. Let's go to our Father in prayer. We'll get into his word this evening. Almighty God, we thank you for a, a great start to our week. Father, we pray that it would continue as we are a people that are in training, Father, to follow your direction and to shine as we do it. Father, uh, we pray that right now we would reach out to you and in spite of this imperfect vessel that stands before your children, Father, we're going to reach out to you anyway, aim for Jesus, Father, and ask you to take these moments, uh, Father, in faith, and uh, we pray that you would speak to your people. It is in Jesus' name the church said, amen. If you got your Bibles, be turning to Exodus chapter 13. I'm going to go a little Old Testament on you this evening. I will have probably more scripture reading than I will have application. And so I want you right now to get on your, where, where you should be, excited to get into the Word of God. As you're turning to Exodus 13 and verse 17... Uh, I can't help but think, this morning preaching on, you know, he's got this Nick blind Bartimaeus. Can you imagine his first week of vision? Can you, and again, the, 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 the scripture says, would you help me recover my sight? And so, you know, maybe he had had it before. But ne nonetheless, it's his first week seen in some time. And his first week, and you're like, well, what did he see? Well, we know what he saw. It said that he went with Jesus on his way. His first week, he gets to see the last week of Jesus before the crucifixion. What an emotional roller coaster. 
As everybody else starts to chant, son of David, lay down the palms, triumphal entry. And there's Bartimaeus going, this is great. They love him like I love him. And boy, things then begin to turn. And I just hope that Bartimaeus was able to be around. Where else would he have gone? I mean, he's found this one that means everything to him for three days after that crucifixion when that stone rolled away. I hope he was able to see as many were able to our risen Lord. And as I think about that story, as I think about the, the emotional roller coaster, the challenge it is, the blessing it is, the God-given opportunity is to follow Jesus. I think about Bartimaeus being a resident of Jericho. And Jericho, you know, think with me for a minute, that would be Sand Springs and the Arkansas River would be the Jordan River. I mean, Jericho is right there on the Jordan River. And so those people in Jericho know the story of that river marked the boundary of where that cloud, where that pillar of fire by night came. Exodus 40 says that wherever they went, the cloud was with them. And now here's Bartimaeus on the other side of that river, and he's attempting to follow that presence that Christ, not in a cloud, but following him in the flesh. And I've been thinking with the blessed opportunity we have to be prayerful over where God is calling us to be prayerful in this next season as a church. With this grand opportunity to stay or go, this grand opportunity to inquire of the Lord, I've been thinking a lot about that cloud. I've been thinking a lot about Bartimaeus. I've been thinking about what it is to follow Jesus, what it is to pursue him and look for him and encourage, move in step with him. And so a question for you this evening, what are the three directions that the cloud moved? In Exodus, as recorded in Numbers, even 1 Corinthians hints at it a little bit, metaphor language. Three directions. There may be more. I'm just starting this. I've really never in all of my studies said, I'm going to focus in on that cloud. And so the three directions that I have come up with so far, if you've got a fourth or a fifth, please catch me after service. I'd, I'd love to know that. But let me begin to read to you in Exodus 13, beginning in verse 17 through 22. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was the shorter route. For God said, if they go that way, they're going to face war and they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt armed for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear an oath. He had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up from, with you from this place. After leaving Sukkoth, they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. And here's where we kind of get down to that first direction the cloud moves. By day the Lord went ahead of them in the pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light ahead of them. So that they could travel by day or night, neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Never left its place in front of the people. The first place that we understand that the cloud of God is, is it is a head of us. And I appreciate so much the language of this church when we say we don't want to be ahead of God. We don't want the cloud to be here and we say, thank you, God, and now here we are. God is out front, we are following him as the disciples in the New Testament are following the Lord, we are following the cloud. We move in step, when it moves, we move. On that note, 
Turn with me. I said we're going to be in a lot of scripture tonight. Turn to Numbers now. Couple, couple books forward. Numbers chapter 9. Verse 18. So what is it to be behind the cloud? To let the cloud be ahead of them wherever it goes. Numbers 9 and 18. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in the camp. Kind of, i.e., as long as it didn't move, they didn't move, they camped. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order, and they did not move, they did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days at the Lord's command. They would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only uh, from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether by day or night, it moves at 2 a.m., we move at 2 a.m. Sinai, it's here for a year, we're here for a year. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out at the Lord's command. They encamped and the Lord's command, they would set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with the command through Moses. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to Exodus 33, verse 14. Y'all, thanks for letting me unpack a study that I am in right now personally with you guys. So sometimes it moves moment to moment. Sometimes it's there for a year. But we obey God. We follow. We don't follow. We stay. We do what God has commanded us to do. Exodus 33. That'd be good if I wasn't in chapter... 13, Exodus 33 and verse 14. So what happens when you follow the cloud? Are there any blessings involved with that? The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence, capital P, does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased or have favor with me and your people unless you go with us. What else will distinguish, another translation says, what else will make us distinct? What else will separate us, me and your people, from all the other people on the face of the earth if you do not go with us? When you allow God to go before you and you don't go ahead of him, number one, you encounter rest. You encounter a God out in front of you. You encounter God moving things that you can't move. Number two, you not only encounter rest, you encounter his favor. That's something I didn't talk a whole lot about or hear a whole lot about growing up. There's something about God's favor where it is beyond specific blessings. It is living in a season of blessings. Not to say everything's rosy. Not to say you'll never have a trial. In fact, there may be even in those trials some favor as he is growing you up. But nevertheless, it is God in the midst of that and his favor developing you and moving you into the place you would have you be. When the cloud is ahead of you and you are following him and not getting out in front of God, there is rest, there is favor, and there is a distinction among God's people. There is a distinction in God's people from the people of the earth. We are distinguished. We are set apart. We are the modern Israel. We are the holy people of God that we're called to be. When we move in ways where the cloud, where God is out ahead of us. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You guys are great. 1 Corinthians 10, I'm going to read quite a bit here, beginning in verse 1.
Paul to the Corinthian church. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They had this experience of immersion in the cloud and the sea. They lived it, they ate it, they drank it. And back to verse 3. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, you can be in the cloud. God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies are scattered across the desert to this day. Now these things occurred as examples. Okay, this is for us. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in pagan revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you're standing firm, well, here's Charlie Mahaffey's most quoted verse. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. And I think one of the greatest ways that we can beat idolaters is trust in our own power, not seeking his rest, not seeking his favor. Church, do you understand in this season what a blessing God has in store for us? Either way, what a time to come together as a body. What a time to be refined. What a time if we stay here to be recommitted to have a new vigor for reaching our communities in this branch model. If God of the cloud moves, what a time to move as a people. Whatever way it goes, as long as we focus on Christ and trust in the Lord, what a blessing is there and not trust in our own power as the cloud stays out ahead of us. And the number one way we do that is be careful of the man who trusts in his own power. Be careful of those who are about to fall because they're prideful people. Let me get to finally, as we follow that cloud, two powerful times that the cloud doesn't just move ahead of them. Turn to Exodus 14. I think this one may be the one that really jumps out and has a word for us today in ways that we act as a church. Exodus 14, beginning in verse 19. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. This is where they're kind of stuck at the Red Sea. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front of them and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. Cloud number one, it moves ahead of you. And on one occasion, the cloud moves behind you. And it is for the purpose of protecting God's people. Church, more than ever, in times where we begin to consider big prayers and big things from a big God, let us also in mustard seed, small, kingdom installing, kingdom glorifying ways, see that God cares very much about his people in the process of moving, being protected as well. How are we going to cooperate and be like a God who moves in such ways? For those who are in the back 
and they're struggling, for those who are in the back and they're slower, for those in the back who for one reason or another should be out front but they're not, for those in the back who are just for some reason in a season of life where they could use some support, we understand we worship a God who says, I got your back. How, church, how do we call? How do we set up the lunch? How do we move in ways where we encourage one another, protect one another, and are there for one another? I pray to God this week that you would be about the business of seeking to protect and comfort and strengthen this family and also bring others into this family. I, I got to, for the past three days, actually it was uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I had a person on my heart that I knew that I needed to engage with the gospel of Christ. Uh, I know this would be weird for you. It's a, a new waitress at the rib crib. And so uh, this is part of my world. And uh, Phil Brookman is in town, the preacher from uh, Memorial Road. We're having a meeting together. And uh, it was this neat opportunity where he got to see the spirit work as well. And we walk out of the restaurant, and I could see her. I was busy talking to Phil. He was unpacking some stuff with me, trying to bless him, work with him as well. Just a moment. She's been on my mind for a few days. We walk out of the restaurant. I'm getting the keys out. I'm unlocking my truck. We're going to hop in. He's got places to be. The waitress, Courtney, who's been here to church several times, has worked there like 15 years, comes running out. She goes, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. I feel, wait, well, hang on, walk. And he says to, she says to me, hey, do you know Emma? I said, yeah, yeah, I, I know Emma. This is one I've been thinking about. He said, she says, she's really having a hard day. And I think she doesn't know Jesus. Would you share Jesus with her? And I'm just like, okay, Lord. Thank you for pulling out the sledgehammer. You know, my, my wife believes, and I, you know, that she was called to donate a kidney to Walt Irwin. I don't know if you've seen Walt lately on Facebook. He looks like 16 years have been knocked off his life. He gave life. Who are you called this week to give life to? Now, and not a kidney, okay? Now, you may want to, you know, that's between you and God, but some encouragement. How do you move behind someone and protect them and strengthen them and encourage them? Exodus 33 and verse 7, the last direction that we're going to talk about tonight that I'm aware of uh, that the cloud moves. Exodus 33, verse 7. Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances of their tents, watching Moses until he entered this tent. And Moses went into the tent, and the pillar of cloud would not go ahead and not go behind, it would come down and it would stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and they worshiped each at the entrance of his tent. The Lord would speak with Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Then Moses would return to the camp but his young age, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. And when did this happen? When anyone was inquiring of the Lord. Church, we need to move into a season of prayer like we have never prayed before. Church, if I could call you to do anything, it would be to pray and be creative in that prayer, be bold in that prayer. And when I say things cliche like like never before please let me be done with that cliche language and say it again as clearly as I can we need to pray like we have never prayed before and that is going to require individuals to pray like we have never prayed before 
Let us become the church that God is calling us to be. It is going to be a bold thing, not for our own glory, where men and women need to come up in your homes pray, on this stage throughout the week pray, in that foyer pray, at the Jinx Jack pray, at Brookside pray, have people who begin to go to that next level of praying and fasting. And many of those people will never know about, but some we will know about because we're called not for our own glory, but to bring others into the life of prayer and fasting that God has called us to bring others into. The cloud moves ahead, it moves behind, and it moves down. Today, maybe you are someone that needs to inquire of the Lord. Maybe as I offer this invitation, you hear me offering a time where we can pray for you. But my real invitation is this, church. It is this. If you want to be baptized, come today. Follow Henry's example. Follow Alex and Emma's example. But also, this week, who do you protect this week, how do you remain behind God and let him move so that you may have rest and favor and distinction? And how can you inquire of him like never before? That's the invitation, not just for the next three verses, but for the next season of this church's life. Today, if we can pray for you, will you come now as we stand and as we